the body and the mind work together and depend on each other. So they both need attention. There's a Bible phrase that says, treat your body like a temple. So just put it in your notes, body like temple. Not a bad suggestion. Treat your body like a temple, not a woodshed. Now in taking care of the physical, we must learn to be conscious of ourselves, but not self-conscious. We need to be aware of our physical appearance, our physical well-being, but not to the point of being self-conscious. We need to be aware, we need to take care, but some people devote too much of their day to physical appearance. Physical appearance is going to have something to do with your future, your well-being, your income, so do spend some time on physical appearance. How we appear to other people does make a difference in terms of our acceptance and our ability to function and do well in the marketplace. In fact, there's another Bible phrase that says, take care of the outside for people and take care of the inside for God. People look on the outside and God looks on the inside. Now you might believe that people shouldn't judge you by physical appearance. Well, let me give you a clue. They do. Make sure you don't order your life based on shoulds and shouldn'ts. You'll always be confused and you'll always have trouble. The best thing to base your life on is reality. What people really do. So since people generally judge by appearance, then that's probably one thing we want to take care of. That's just part of the game. Now, of course, when people get to know you or if they've been around you any length of time at all, they're going to judge you by more than appearance. But sure enough, people at first are going to take a look. So taking care of yourself in personal appearance is a consideration. Now, physical development also includes your good health and your well-being. You've got to spend some time on that so that you feel good in the marketplace. Get involved in some form of disciplined exercise. Keeping fit and feeling good has a positive effect on your attitude, not just your appearance. Even if you're not into sports, there are some cassette programs and books on how to stay in excellent shape in only 20 to 30 minutes a day. Get the tapes and find your best way to stay physically fit. Just develop a bit of consciousness about taking care of yourself physically. Physical fitness pays great dividends in terms of your energy level, your ability to live a long, healthy life, and your general sense of well-being. The other part of physical well-being is nutrition. There are some excellent cassettes and books on this subject for you to investigate as well. Do all you can to stay fit, to stay healthy, and to stay well, because physical health and fitness affect how you feel about yourself and how you perform in the marketplace. When you feel good about yourself, other people will feel good about you too. Appearance, vigor, vitality, and well-being have a lot to do with how your life works out. That's the physical side. Now, the mental exercise and nourishment are just as important as physical and spiritual exercise and nourishment. You want to make sure that the acceleration of your mental health, mental well-being, and mental capacity keeps up with your physical capacity. So make sure at 40 that your mind has kept up with the passing of the years. Don't stay 30 at 40. Don't stay 30 at 50. Keep up the learning curve with mental exercises. It's so important for you and me to be stretched beyond where we are. It's too easy to just comfortably sit and stop growing. It often doesn't seem to be that necessary to make the push, to make the effort to learn and to grow and to challenge yourself. But let me give you something to think about. The last few years of the 20th century are going to demand a lot more mental vigor and mental activity. The competition and complications of life are going to truly challenge the full capacity of our mentality. So, stretch your mind. Do you ever think about what you think about? Because if you did, and if you took control of that, you could alter the direction of your entire life. Most people never take the time to take an inventory about their thoughts, yet our thoughts control our world. Our thoughts are like magnets. They literally draw towards us that which we obsess about. And so most people never take the time to analyze what they think about. The most successful people I know are the most self-aware, meaning they're aware of what they do and they're also aware of what they think, they're aware of how they're perceived. So today's message is about thinking. So there's some stats you need to know. Number one is 
Average person, you and I have about 75,000 thoughts a day rattling around in this thing we call our brains and our minds, 75,000 of them. The crazy thing is 91% of those thoughts are identical to the previous day and are identical to the day before that and the day before that and the day before that. And then we wonder why our life seems to repeat itself over and over again. So really the difference in our life, if we have 75,000 thoughts a day, here's the crazy thing, 91% of them are exactly the same. The separation in our life is in those 9% of their thoughts because remember this, these magnets are pretty powerful. That's why I'm always saying that your obsessions become your possessions because they do. You draw into your life exactly what it is you think about. It's a physical reality that you attract to yourself what you think about. So the difference in our life is 9% of our thoughts. That's why people say all the time the difference between winning and losing is so small, it's almost too scary to talk about. And really, we've identified what it is. It's 9% of what we think about alters the direction of our life. So what I'm here to tell you today is you've got to hone in and get aware of what you think about and then alter those 9% of the thoughts that are variable on a daily basis to serve you. Because if you don't, these thoughts become like viruses. They're viruses in our minds. What happens in a computer when it gets a virus? It slows down, it becomes sluggish, it doesn't function at its optimal level. Same thing with our thinking. If we don't get those 9% of our thoughts to serve us, our lives go in a completely different direction. So remember this, you don't see things in your life as they are. You see things in life as you are. And so the more you alter you, the more you begin to see things differently. What is amazing about this is we control who we are by what we think about. Think about this just for a second. Wherever you're sitting watching this, the chair that you're sitting in, if you're sitting in a chair, if you're driving in a car and you're listening to this, that seat you're in started in someone's mind as a thought, right? Every detail of it, the fabric, the cushions, the way it's structured, every single piece of that started in someone's mind as a thought and then became a reality by putting out the pieces together. See, everything in life is that way as well. It always begins with a thought. When we think a new thought, here's what literally happens. Thinking a new thought literally opens a space up in our minds, in our lives, that never existed before prior to having that thought. It's like a brand new space you've created just by thinking it. And what happens is your subconscious and subconscious mind goes to work on filling in that space with the people, places, resources, and things to fill it up like a room in an architect would, to fill up that space and fully furnish it. That's the power of how we think. So literally everything that exists started as a thought in someone's mind and then became a material matter. And so you've got to begin to think about the things you want to materialize in your life on a regular basis and think about it repetitiously. Literally the things that we obsess about become the things that we possess in our lives. Most people, those variable 9% of the thoughts is the new thing they're worried about, the new fear they have, the new response to an email they have to make, and they never dictate the terms. Remember this, your mind is a weapon and you gotta begin to use it and pick that weapon up and control it. Most people are out of control with their mind. They don't point it at something. They let the world point it and they miss fire all the time. Get back up. That's what life is about. Get knocked down, but not stand down. Taking in that air, breathing in that life, but having the ability to getting back up. Circumstances are happening every single day in people's lives. And some things they just don't have control over. Not you, not me, not anyone. But nevertheless, we must have the ability to get up. You can be rejected. You can feel alone. Your relationships are bad. Things are not working out the way you want them to work out. But you still have to have the ability to get up. You must be strong enough and willing enough to understand the circumstances that are happening in your life must happen and it will happen, but you don't stop going forward. You don't let distractions or anything disrupting your ideas and your dreams and your life. Your life is beautiful. Regardless of the hurts, regardless of the setbacks, regardless if you get knocked down, you've got to have the ability to get up. A lot of people want to give up. A lot of people are hopeless. But what are you? Are you going to fit in that category? Do you feel that you need to be that type of person? Do you feel that you are hopeless? Or do you have enough faith and enough hope within your heart and your soul to carry on? Don't give in to the circumstances that you feel that are holding you down. Sometimes you got to go through the pain so you can understand what a real victory is all about. A lot of people want easy, a lot of people want to celebrate a victory, but what victory have you earned if you haven't suffered? Don't be that individual. 
Stand on what you got to do and go after it. Being knocked down. How many times have we heard, I'm at the end of my rope? How many times have we heard, I don't have any hope? How many times have we heard, I don't have no faith? How many times have we heard, I can't? How many times have we heard, I'll try it? How many times have we heard, I can't? You can't, can't do nothing for you anyway. So why hold on to it? Why believe in it? Why trust in it? Why give can't so much power? Why give excuses so much power? Why can't you just hide the fact and understand that there's something that is unique and beautiful about you? This morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, there's nothing as powerful as a changed mind. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. You can change your hair, your clothing, your address, your spouse, your church, your residence. But if you don't change your mind, the same experience will perpetuate itself over and over again because everything outwardly changed, but nothing inwardly changed. Every, every idea you have, every mindset you have, your way of thinking, that's what your philosophy is. Your way of thinking is gonna bear fruit. How you think about a thing is gonna determine your whole life. How you think about a thing determines how you live. If you want to change the way you live, you got to change the way you think. You are the reflection of your thinking. You are the character of your mind. The life you live today is a uh, uh, a manifestation of the inner workings of your mind and that controls how people perceive you and how people relate to you on a regular basis there are too many people who don't know the importance of the mind the mind is a massive tool for our benefit that mind is is like the rudder that directs a ship. See, for your spirit, your mind is so important. If you turn your mind away from what you're supposed to be focusing on, your feeling would die. Can you see that? For whatever it is, your emotions for it. You need your emotions, your feelings, everything must come together and your mind is responsible for doing that. So you start by channeling your mind to your purpose. You set your mind, your mind helps you channel all the forces of your spirits in the direction of that focus. So you use your mind, you set your mind. You have to fix the mind before you can bestow the blessing because until they get their mind right, everything you invest in them is going to leak out of the crevices of a mind that refuses to change. Look at your neighbor and ask him, do you have a mind to change? Wait for an answer. If they say no, drag them to the altar. Tell them they got till midnight to get that fixed. They've got till midnight to, to dump out all jealousy, all pettiness, all unforgiveness, all strife, all malice, all confusion, all blaming other people for your mistake. You got till midnight to get rid of every poison that's hindering you, every inflexibility that's stopping you from what God is about to pour into your life. Woe be unto you if you go into another year and waste another year year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now you better step into this moment 
But what kind of philosophy is the enemy going to use to rob you of something you already have? Vain deceit, tradition of men, Christmas, the Easter money, all of that is to the Easter money, Santa Claus. <laughs> sure, that, that temptation, those tests, those trials, they keep showing up because you won't allow the transformation to take place by renewing your mind. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us, and then they drag us away. And verse 15 says, these desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Well, God wants all of that to be dealt with by renewing the mind, but God can't come and renew your mind for you. You've got to be willing to cooperate with God. You know, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, works on the inside of us and he changes our desires to to do what pleases God and gives us the power to be able to do that. And I think the idea is, is that, you know, as Christians, we just chill out and just don't do anything. But that's why he talked about dedication first. Can you dedicate yourself to this? I mean, something happens when you renew your mind with the word. Now I understand what, what it feels like when you're, you're, you're trying to renew your mind with the word, but you're, you're not getting the right teaching. And then the teaching becomes condemning and, and it becomes, it's, it's shaming you and all that. Well, that's, that's not, it's not being rightly divided. But when you get an understanding of how to rightly divide the word and you start letting it renew your mind, it brings freedom. And all you want to do is do what's right. You're not, you're, you're going to be more into doing what pleases God and less into doing what pleases you when you begin to really understand the gospel. And so when our minds are renewed by the word of God, and I say the word of God, I've got to be very precise, the word of God or in the New Testament or, you know, after Jesus rose from the dead, the word of God was that word of grace. And, and, and I'm specifically talking about renewing your mind with that word of grace so that it can bring you to a place you've never been before. When that happens, we will overcome negative desires and we will live in God's perfect will for our lives. Now, renewing the mind is more than learning. It's changing. Give me a new mind means give me a new perspective. Give me a new perspective. Give me a new way of looking at my situation. Give me a new way of looking at my circumstances. Get my mind ready for this year because when I get this year, there's going to be blessings. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be opportunities. Oh, yes, there's going to be some struggles. There's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some tests. But even the struggles are an opportunity for me to show off the victory if my mind can handle the change do you have the mindset to be blessed you have to decide to be blessed you have to decide you know what this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad that I will rejoice I, as an act of my will, I've decided I'm going to rejoice. I made up my mind. I'm going to be happy. I made up my mind. I'm going to enjoy. I'm as healthy as I'm going to be. I'm as young as I'm ever going to be. I can't get any younger. I can't roll the clock back. What With what I got left, I'm going to maximize this. I will rejoice. See, that's, that's getting on somebody's nerves right now because that old mind can't rejoice. No, not me. I can't rejoice. I'm still angry. I'm not going to rejoice till they apologize. I'm not going to rejoice until he leaves that other woman. I'm not going to rejoice until my children appreciate me. You are wasting time. You have to let the past go and step over into the future and say, I I will rejoice. So you understand, it, there's this principle again, that it's going to be very difficult for the grace of God to have anything to do in the life of a person who has a, 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 a high 
uh, or exaggeration of his own self-importance because it'll be by the grace of God, but we cooperate with him by renewing our mind in that word. And we cooperate with, with the spirit of God. So most people, they become Christians and they still remain conformed to the world and all of the world's failure and all of the problems until they renew their mind. That's something I want you to you hear. I, I hope it's something that's a uh, light bulb's coming on. Like, oh, wow. So no wonder I'm still the same. Most people become Christians and still remain conformed to the world and all of its failure and problems until, until they renew their mind. Here's my question tonight. Are you still renewing your mind? Renewing the mind is not a, a, a one-time event. And I'm going to say that over and over again. It's a lifetime process. So it's not, well, I've renewed my mind. If you, if you can say I've renewed my mind, you're in trouble because it's, it's got to be a continuous renewing of the mind to keep you, uh, from being conformed to the ways of the world. The devil doesn't mind you coming to church. <laughs> the devil doesn't mind you singing in the choir. The devil doesn't mind if you preach. The devil doesn't mind if you shout all over the church. The devil only minds if you change your mind. Now, you may be born again on your way to heaven, but at the present time, you're living in hell on the earth. Why? Because you're still conformed to this world. You're still fashioned and, and molded and controlled by the ways of this world. And if you're still depressed and if you're still afraid of life circumstances and you're still treating your spouse badly and you're still struggling in poverty, you're still having to see, uh, uh, you, you're still having to, uh, to, 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 to adjust certain things that you used to do when you were not saved. You're still having sex with someone who is not your, 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 your spouse or somebody you're married to. You're still caught up in pornography. You're still mad at the world. And then though you may be born again, you're still conformed to the world. And that's why all that happens. If you're still doing something that you thought that getting born again would stop, I'm telling you, that's not how it happens. You can get born again and don't renew your mind and you'll still be caught up in the conforming, conforming to the ways of the world. And that's what that's all about. That's why people keep doing that because they have not under the importance of the word of God and renewing their mind with God's word. We keep doing our best to try to throw the Bible away and say it's just no good. And I'm telling you, it is the very uh, essence that God has provided to us as Christians for change and transformation in our lives. Everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready and everything that's backwards and everything that's negative and everything that's condescending and everything that's carnal and everything that's holding me back, I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind. The devil is a lie. You can get your family out. You can get your job out. You can get your career out. You can get your health out. You can get your prosperity out. If you can get your mind out, no devil in hell, no weapon formed against you, no enemy that hates you, no witch that hexes you can stop you from being free. If you can get your mind out, grab yourself by the head and say, we're coming out of this. Jeremiah 4.14. He says, Oh, Jerusalem, wash your heart from wickedness that you may be saved. How long shall your, your, your in, iniquitous and grossly offensive thoughts huh, lodge within you? You know what he's saying? There's no change until you begin to change the way you think. 
there's no change until you begin to change those 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 thoughts that are that are in your mind. Look at James chapter one, verse thirteen through fifteen, because I know I'm challenging people. But listen, it this is this is all Bible. This is all Scripture. It, you know, there are always going to be somebody to say, "Well, I don't agree with that." Well, just because you don't agree with the Bible, you're still trying to find a way to justify, you know, what you're doing and how you're living. Then you're still trying to change the word instead of allowing the word to change you. So what it boils down to is this. The battleground between God and the enemy, between right and wrong, between success and struggle, between destiny or that which is derogatory, is fighting for your mind. Because in your mind, are your default settings. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you don't change it in your head, you can't change it in your life. I don't care whether it's losing weight. I don't care whether it's going after a job. I don't care whether it's being faithful and committed. I don't care whether it's being honest and true. It has to change up here or it won't change anywhere else. There is nothing as powerful as a change my life. Our environment, our associations, the fact that we were born in sin, we have a predisposition to be defaulted to depravity. Our circumstances all around us affect our default. A culture is nothing over Christ. Culture is an agricultural term, which simply means that which is planted has been encouraged to grow. And some things have been planted in you that have been encouraged to grow. The question is, are you willing to allow a new truth to be planted in place of past experiences and thereby change your mind? Or will you be imprisoned to live a future of weakness or ignorance or evil or fear, not because you don't want to be better. Esau wanted his birthright. He never got it back because he was unsuccessful at changing his mind. I tried that and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work, and I tried that and it didn't work. Because you think that trying something for a little while ought to bring you a big return. But life does not work like Apple. Life does not click and it appears. Some stuff takes time. Greatness takes time. It takes time. You got to be prepared to get a thousand no's to get one yes. The thing you need to win is resilience. You can't just keep trying different stuff, different stuff, because you can never say something didn't work when you didn't have try. Be resilient. Stick it out. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Resilient. Life is going smoothly, then the bottom falls out. Everything is coming up roses, then the bottom falls out. Everything is working out in his favor, and then the bottom falls out. The life starts going your way finally, then the bottom falls out. You plan your retirement, and now you have to take care of your grandchildren. You plan for life to work a certain way, and then the bottom falls out. You're looking for this, and God sends that. You have to be awfully immature to think that every day is going to be a good day. Some days are better than other days. And some days, if it ain't one thing, it's another. What would you do if you knew you could fail, but understood that that failure could be a real blessing in your life? Now, that's a good question.
because I think we don't reach our possibilities, not because the door isn't open, but because we stop before we get to the door. Every possibility is surrounded by obstacles and challenges. I've never had a possibility with a clear path that I had no opposition to and just ran up there and knocked on the door and everything opened and everything was good. That only happens in the movies, friends. Resilience. Resilience, the ability to return to the original form after being bent or being compressed. That's the dictionary's definition of resilience. The ability to readily recover from illness or depression. Resilience, being able to withstand setbacks, financial crisis, loss of loved ones, loss of enterprise, and loss of health. How would you ever handle it if you lost everything you had today? What would it take for you to pull yourself up and start all over again? How resilient are you? Could you learn from all your disappointments and start all over again? What would it take? It would take a lot of positive self-talk to muster up the energy to begin again. It would take a lot of concentration to block out the noise and the clutter and the negative voices of others around you. It would also take what? A lot of self-reliance. Your future success has everything to do with you. What's happened has happened. You would need to get on with your life and begin again. It would take a lot of faith and trust in God to move ahead. It would take a lot of self-appreciation, knowing that you have the skills and the talent and the strength to do it one more time. Resilience, the ability to bounce back from adversity, no matter how large or how small. Possibilities are always surrounded by challenges. You gotta get through the challenges to get to the possibilities, but it's worth it. It's kind of like a Tootsie Roll. You gotta get through the hard stuff so you can get to the good soft stuff. That's the way it is with life. That's the way it is with possibilities. What's the use of always keeping thinking of the past? Each must have his tribulation, water with his wine. Life, it ain't no celebration. Trouble, I've had mine, but today is fine. It's today that I'm living, not a month ago, having, losing, taking, giving, as time wills it so. Yesterday, a cloud of sorrow fell across the way. It may rain again tomorrow. It may rain, but say, ain't it fine today? If a cloud of sorrow comes over here, ain't it fine today? Living in the moment, getting everything we can out of where we are in the moment where we are right now. The other thing is willingness to let people and things go. You want to live a life of fulfillment. You've got to be willing to let certain people go in your life. When they're no longer good for you, just let them go. Just to hold on tenaciously really doesn't make really good sense, all right? Just many times we do it because we don't realize that we might desire it, but we don't need it. Face the truth about life and deal with it. Whatever happens to you, use everything for your upliftment, learning, and growth. Everything that happens, use it for your upliftment. What can I get from this? How did I end up here? What's the blessing in this for me? Ask yourself that whatever it is, and don't let it go until you get your blessing out of it, because there's a blessing there. There's something for you in everything that happens to you for you to learn from that experience. Look at it, examine it, analyze it, until it reveals itself to you, and then get what you need from that and move on. It takes time to make changes in habit and discipline. Here's the ultimate challenge. You've got to have patience with yourself. It takes time to correct old errors in judgment. I'm telling you, it took me some time. I used to blame the government and blame taxes and blame the company. It took time to give that up and only blame myself. So have patience with yourself, number one. Number two is to keep doing it. Be persistent. As long as you are patient and persistent, it's hard to elude success. As long as you maintain patience and persistence, there's only one person, just one person that will draw the line between success and failure. And that person is you. So be patient, be persistent. You need both patience and persistence together. And here's why. Lack of patience is probably the worst enemy of ambition. Impatience wants to give up. Impatience calls discouragement failure. 
But your ambition won't let you give up so easily, not if you're persistent. What others may call failure, ambition calls a learning opportunity. Ambition knows that the longer the achievement is in coming, the more valued it is. Oh, please, listen to yourself. You know the feelings, if you start listening to the feelings in your heart, and I'm doing it now more every day, I find that my feelings, I can trust them. And I say to you, that as you look toward the future, you look at life on a daily basis, if you've heard something within yourself that you know that, that what you're doing now doesn't fit for you, it doesn't work for you, it's not giving you what you want, and there's something else that you want to do, don't allow that inner doubt in you to talk you out of it, to tell you why you're not good enough. You ignore that inner voice and all of the external voices. Don't judge the possibilities for what you can do based upon the circumstances, because the circumstances won't determine who you are. Don't determine what you're able to do based upon your resources. Don't determine what's possible for you based upon where your life is right now. Where your life is right now is not you. That's just what it is right now. But the possibilities for you are unlimited. It's unlimited if you're coming back from adversity and devastation. It's unlimited of what you can do. That's the capacity of human beings. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how many flops you've had. It doesn't matter how much money you've lost of what you learn from life. Not losses, but investments of what's possible for you. And I say to you that once you start listening to yourself and as you begin to act on your dream, you will start seeing things opening up for you. You'll start attracting people. You start brainstorming. Ideas will come out of nowhere as you focus on it. The key to it is to begin to focus because as you focus on that which you want to do, that which we focus on, that which we give our energy to, it will begin to multiply. It will begin to expand. It will begin to develop your consciousness. And out of that comes your greatness. Out of that comes a commitment. Out of that comes a passion for life. Out of that comes a special power that you have in you. See, the, the powers that we have will never reveal themselves if we don't challenge them. Put yourself in a position where you can't retreat, where it's do or die, sink or swim. Here's what you'll find out. You'll develop incredible swimming skills. You'll find yourself stroking unlike you've ever seen before. Through the inspiration of desperation, you'll become more creative than ever before. All you can do is all you can do. And all you can do is enough. Make sure you do all you can do. Knowing when an opportunity is right and when more preparation is needed. Be patient in knowing the difference between when the opportunity is right and when more work needs to be done. Remain alert even if opportunity doesn't come right away. Keep looking. Be patient. Keep preparing for opportunities, even if there's a delay. Even if things aren't going just the way you think they should. Keep your disappointments at bay. Be prepared. Always be prepared. Don't let impatience allow you to give up. Take the little setbacks in stride. Don't let small disappointments discourage you. Don't let the little successes delude you. Avoid the emotional roller coaster that will always, always disrupt your plan. If you think ordinary's cool, ain't no problem. It's some really wonderful ordinary people. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're gonna have to do extra. You put extra on top of ordinary and you come up with extraordinary. It's no other way. But here's the fact. All of you have extraordinary capabilities. All of you. You have to decide if you are willing to do the things to put you in that category. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. He who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. What do you do when you tried and failed and you want to quit and you want to give up? Because trying again means hurting again, means risking again, means believing again, means hoping again. 
Sometimes you can be blessed and be unhappy because even though things are going right, they're not going according to what you had believed and expected and you know that something is missing out of your life. What do you do when something is missing out of your life and the things that replaced it do not compensate for what you lost? I've always been told how average I can be. Always been criticized about being average. But I want to tell you something. I stand here before you, not listening to those words, but telling myself every single day to shoot for the stars, to be the best that I can be. Good enough isn't good enough if it can be better. And better isn't good enough if it can be best. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Think about that. If you aren't dead, then it's just psychological. It does not mean that you won't lose some battles, because you will. We all will. But it does mean that as long as you don't surrender, as long as you don't give up, as long as you don't quit, then you haven't failed. It just means you've made a temporary tactical retreat, a brief withdrawal. So that you can regroup and reattack. If you get beat, unless you're dead, you are not defeated. And you have not failed. What you've done is you've learned. You've gained experience and you're still alive. So get up and go get after it. We all live in this bubble. What you gotta do to get the life that God wants you to have, you gotta put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. This thing called life. You just don't know what the next moment will bring. But here's what I do know and I want you to know. You have comeback power. When something happens to you, don't buy into what has happened to you. Buy into, I'm getting up out of here. I'm going to change this situation. This does not work for me. And I don't have the luxury of being depressed and angry. I need to clear my head. This is no time to do something stupid like hurt yourself. No, 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 no. So get serious about your goals, business goals, financial goals, financial independence goals, family goals. I mean, there's so many things to work on on this. If you don't get busy and work on it, sure enough, the time will pass. And sure enough, five years from now, you'll wind up where you don't want to be, wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, being what you don't want to be. Now's the time to fix it. Your goals are affecting you, whatever they are. Your goals affect your attitude, personality. All day long, we're being affected by our goals. You got to clear your head so that the decision that you make represents the best in you. People who don't stop to clear their heads, they react. They don't respond. Be still and know that you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. And you don't want to be radical. You don't want to be erratic. Just be still. And no, I'm going to get through this. You got to assure yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to clear your mind. 